one of the hardest things I've ever had to do because there's so many great players that have played for the All Blacks. In 1956, that's the first test I saw. These, these youngsters here haven't seen nearly as much rugby as I've seen. I've got a million things squirrelling around on the head. So you've got a pen and pencil for some. Yeah, I can't read that back. Hi everyone, my name is Grant Nisbet. I've been lucky enough to be commentating the All Blacks for about the last 40 odd years. So um, I've been in most of the iconic moments in All Black rugby. And our task in this little series is uh, to pick our best All Black 15 of players we have seen. And I'm surrounded by masterminds of New Zealand rugby, Sir Wayne Smith, Sir Graham Henry, and Sir Steve Hansen. So guys, let's start. Um, you're all obviously uh, esteemed coaches, but I'm interested firstly in talking about selection. Where does selection and coaching uh, come together? Wayne, firstly. Well, in, in this case, um, Ted's obviously got a big advantage, is not he? When I mean, he goes back, goes back way further than we do. Can he remember <laughs> back further than we can? Yeah, yeah. yeah selection's, um, oh, it's critical, isn't it? And, uh, and it's not just about picking the best player, it's picking the best player to, to fit the team and to fit the structure and the, to fit the many units around them. So that's the challenge, I think, for us today. How does you go about selection? Well, I think selection is probably about 75% of winning. So if you get the selection right, you've got a greater chance to win. And Steve, the importance of selection? My criteria for picking this team is it's going to play a game tomorrow, so to speak. So I've looked for players that can play in today's world, um, not necessarily the greatest players to have ever played for the All Blacks. So for me, uh, Tony Woodcock would be my loose head. A, he's a great scrummager, uh, he's a good line-out forward and could get around the park and play with the football. So he'd be my loose head prop, my hooker. I tossed up between um, Fitzy and Dane Coles. I think both of them revolutionised the game. Fitzy's probably the icon, but for me, Colsey, he even changed what Fitzy did. I'll go for Colsey. I think both of them had good niggle. Uh, both were good scrummages, both good line-out forwards, but Colsey just could do a little bit more with the ball in hand. My tight head uh, was a guy I didn't see a lot of, but uh, when I look back and see what he used to do as a player, was Ken Gray. I thought he was a magnificent player and you know, he could fit into today's world. OK, Quite so easy. Ken Gray, Dane Coles, Tony Woodcock, Graham. Yeah, well, my criteria is a wee bit different from Steve's. Uh, I, I think the different generations, you know, obviously the latest generation's got an advantage because they're going to be bigger. I don't disagree, with, actually, with Steve. I think Tony Woodcock, his loose head prop, played a huge amount of games. Congratulations. We salute you, mate. Uh, 100 tests is uh, phenomenal, and uh, congratulations. Well, he is the 25th centurion in all of Test rugby and the fifth prop behind Jason Leonard. He was uh, the strong man in our scrum for a long time. Also, I agree with um, the other prop, Ken Gray. He was an icon in his time. Everybody looked at him and said, that's the ideal prop. But I wouldn't agree with the hooker. I think Fitzpatrick was captain of the All Blacks for a long time. He played 90-odd tests. Uh, he was the first captain to win a series in South Africa. But he was a big man, and he was a fantastic scrummager. So that would be my three. Wayne, any common ground there for you? I'd Wilson Winneray, as Milo said. I know he wasn't as good a scrummager as, as Woody, but I want my plays to come around the back of the line out. It's called Willie Away for a reason. And uh, great leader, great man, very smart. Well, I've got Sean Fitzpatrick. Um, again, I was um, sort of Kevin Milamu, Dane Coles, two of my favourites. Love those guys, what they bring. Um, but for me, Sean Fitzpatrick, he was big, tough scrummager. And I've got Ken Gray. I didn't see a lot of Ken Gray, obviously, but everything you hear about the man is he was magnificent, tight head prop. Colin Mead said, he was the greatest rugby player he ever played with, Ken Gray. And you guys have all got him in. Yeah. Can I just go back a bit? I'm allowed to do that, I'm sure. You know, Kevin Skinner played prop for the All Blacks in the 56 against the Springboks. He played on one side of the scrum 
and sorted his prop out. The prop on the other side, the Springbok prop, the Becker and Cock were the names. He was causing problems on the other side. He switched over to the other side of the scrum and sorted him out as well. And famously, uh, Kevin Skinner only had the sleeve rolled up on one arm. It was the one that he dealt to the opposition with. <laughs> he was also... Um, <laughs> so they couldn't see which colour it was. <laughs> <laughs> he was also New Zealand heavyweight bo boxing champion. Yes, yes, he was. That was pretty helpful yeah. at the time. Well, OK, let's move on. Let's talk about the locks, shall we? Well, I haven't picked Colin. I know that'll cause a lot of controversy, but at six foot two, uh, he he doesn't fit modern day lock. But look, you don't be named the All Black of the century for for nothing. So please don't, don't anyone take it as disrespect that I haven't picked him. But the two I've gone with uh, Retallick and White Lock. I think they form a great combination. Sam at some point may go past Richie as the most capped All Black. And Retallick, I think, has got over 100 tests now too, has he not? Mm, yep. Um, so that's a lot of tests rugby to play and, and you know, keep your standards as high as they have. So if I could pick three, then I'd put Colin in, but no doubt the other two will have picked him. And <laughs> what do you say? As Steve said, Colin was the All Black of the century and he had a massive influence on the All Black team for as long as he played, which is about 15 years, I believe. Peter Whiting was a very good rugby lock forward. He was, to me, a, an extremely good player in the 80s, and I met him recently and we discussed rugby, and I, I told him I thought he was one of the great locks of all black rugby, and um, he was very embarrassed. He was a very, very humble man, uh, but he was a great lock in those days. I've got a massive amount of time for Sam. I think he's been very influential with his leadership, and maybe a wee bit more than Brody, um, but you guys will know better because you've had both together. So I would pick Colin Meads and Sam Whitelock as my two locks. I'd like to mention Andy Hayden as well. In that era that I played, he was the most dominant lock. We played in a, in a World 15 against the British Lions in 1986, and we had these two um, Springbok props. And we first line out at training, um, of course there was no lifting in those days, but the South Africans lifted. And then Andy Hayden got lifted by these two props. He went flying out of the line out <laughs> and ended up just about at my feet. <laughs> Without the ball, he was terrified. Hit the ground like that. I picked Colin Meads only because I'm bloody scared of him. <laughs> then I realised he's passed away. Um, Sammy Whitelock, if we win the World Cup this year, he's, he's won three World Cups. Three World Cups. So if he wins three, I'm going to stick him in. But I've got uh, Brady Retallick and Colin Meads. All right, guys, exactly. this will probably be the most contentious, uh, the loose forward trio, because they have to kind of complement each other, don't they? So, Steve, you go first. Oh, well, number seven will be McCaw. And again, uh, that's at the expense of one of the greatest players I've ever seen play the game, and Michael Jones. So I put Michael Jones somewhere else in the group, and then I think uh, the balance isn't quite right. So I've gone for Richie ahead of Michael. Uh, number eight, uh, again, a tough battle between Kieran Reid and the player I picked was Zinni. Zinzan Brook, he's trying a drop kick from a million miles out. What a goal! Zinni was such a wonderful player, smart, uh, competitive, aggressive and highly, highly skilled. He, he gets a nod just ahead of Kieran Reid. And then in the loose at six, you know, you've got people like Jerome Kino, who I thought was a magnificent uh, forward for us for a long time. You've got Walker Nathan, you know, you just reel off a stream of them. But the guy I've gone for is Ian Kirkpatrick. He had skill, he had aggression, he had pace. I remember the try he scored on Lancaster Park where we went well over 50 metres. And I think in today's conditions, he'd be a tremendous uh, rugby player. So my three would be Richie, Zinni and Ian Kirkpatrick. Great. I coached Zinni for the Auckland and the Blues. And... Zin Zandbrook and the Auckland Blues win the initial Super 12. Like he was a remarkable player, competitive in everything he did. Players just held him in such high regard. South African that took it over. Look at this by Zin Zandbrook and he's in. He led from the front. Uh, he would be my number eight. Number seven, obviously, Richie. 
the biggest motor I've ever seen on a rugby player. He won games for us when I was coaching, just by his sure tenacity. It's unbelievable. In the World Cup in 2011, where he played three finals, quarter final, semi final, final, where broken metatarsal was unbelievable. You couldn't comprehend how much um, courage that took. Not only, of course, is he a special player, but he's just an outstanding man. And to achieve 100 test matches, you need to be an outstanding person. Six, well, I have to go Michael Jones. I think Michael Jones is probably the most gifted player I ever coached. Magnificent footballer. That would be my three. Probably this is the position I had the most angst about um, because it was so close, you know. I'd, I loved Wayne Shelford. He was just such an enforcer, such a great leader, never lost a game with the All Blacks. But I've gone with Zinzan Brook. The situation, look at this by Zinzan. Is that going to be over? He's kicked it over. And He's possibly the best all round forward I've ever seen. Richie McCaw, 100% at seven. Michael Jones, Jerome Kaino, Ian Kirkpatrick, Waka Nathan, uh, BJ Lahore. Can't even fit BJ in. Mm. So mm. I put I put him in as coach actually. Sorry, Ted. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, Steve. You don't have to be sorry to me, I'm happy with BJ. I endorse that. So um, <laughs> tough decision, but yeah, I've put Kirky in at six. Well, you can see in our ultimate forward pack, Graham and Steve agreed on Tony Woodcock at Loosehead Prop. But Wayne went with Sir Wilson Winneray for that number one jersey. Graham and Wayne agreed Fitzy was the best hooker they've ever seen, but Steve went for Dane Coles. Ken Gray was the clear choice as tight head prop in this team. Then onto the locks, the three masterminds had three names here for just two positions. Retallick and Whitelock from this era of the game, but you can't forget Pine Tree, Sir Colin Meads. Wayne and Steve went for Ian Kirkpatrick at number six, but Graham couldn't miss out on Sir Michael Jones and his team. They all agreed on Richie at open side flank and Zinni at number eight. A certain amount of uh, unanimity there. So that's the forward pack. Uh, back in our next episode, we'll be talking about the backs. <laughs>